Welcome to the fifth episode of the Venn Diagram Podcast. Today, Benedict and I are going to be discussing the school system in Germany. So the school system in America is linear. So by that, I mean you start in one spot and everybody goes straight up to something else. It's not like the school system in Germany where it branches off. So you start in kindergarten, which is funny because it's actually a German word, Kinder meaning children or child, and then Garten meaning garden, right? Yes. So it's like a child's garden where they grow. So that's kindergarten. And then you go all the way through grade school, which goes first grade through fifth grade. And then you go to middle school, which in most places is sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. I know in some places in America, it's still seventh, eighth, and ninth, I believe. And then you go to high school, which in most places is ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grades. And then in some places, it's just 10, 11, and 12. In Colorado, you can drop out of school, I believe, when you're 17. So that's your junior or senior year. So you're required to go to school until then. And then some of the time, people go to college after high school. That's just by the person. And after college, you might go get your master's degree. You might go get your doctorate. And that's just extensions of college. So that's basically how the American school system works. It's just linear. It goes straight up the line. How do the German school systems work? Um, So first, you... Well, technically, it's not a school going into kindergarten because it's not mandatory. Is it it mandatory in, in America? I'm not sure. I don't think kindergarten is, um, but I know most people do it. The thing that isn't mandatory in America is preschool. So I think preschool is comparable to kindergarten in Germany. So, yeah, we have kindergarten as well. Then you would go into Grundschule, which is elementary school, from first uh, through to fourth grade. And then after elementary school, that's kind of where it branches off. You can go to um, Hauptschule or It's not named Hauptschule anymore because the name Hauptschule uh, had kind of a bad image. So they renamed it to Werkrealschule to make it sound better. What was the bad image? It just had a bad image. Like it it was the lowest of all of all school grades that you could get the Hauptschule Abschluss. And yeah, the next one up would be the Realschule. And then they called it Werkrealschule to make it. Sound more like Realschule, I guess. So you go from kindergarten and then you go into Grundschule and that's first through fourth and that's just linear. And then you can branch off and go to... Yeah, to Hauptschule. Hauptschule. Well, it's Werkrealschule, Realschule and Gymnasium. And Gymnasium. So you have kindergarten and then you have Grundschule and then it branches off into the Realschule and the Gymnasium, correct? It branches off into Werkrealschule, Realschule and Gymnasium. And you you can you can switch between those branches if you want. Um, so if you were to go to Gymnasium um, until sixth grade and then say, oh well it's it's too hard for me or I don't really need uh, an Abitur or what's it, an NA level for the job that I want, then you can as well go to Realschule. And if you're in Realschule, you can as well switch to Gymnasium. Okay, so why would you go to Gymnasium versus Realschule? To go to college, you have to get a um, Abitur or A levels, I think that's what it's called. And that's and, uh, through gymnasium then? Um, yeah, you can get it to through gymnasium. Um, that's the general A-level or the Allgemeine Hochschulreife or the, the Allgemeines Abitur, if you want. 
but you can also get a special abitus in different um if if you do the realschule abschluss then you can then decide to go to special um gymnasiums so that's just um 11th and 12th grade and then you can get it an a level in technical fields like what kind of technical fields um stem fields so it would be like the equivalent of a university degree or it would be something more hands-on no that degree would only give you the ability to go into college for those specific fields like math science physics informatics or no it's not informatics it's computer science so you go kindergarten and then you go grundschule and when you're in fourth grade you have to decide whether you're going to go to Riaschule, and then from there you can decide if you want to go to a special gymnasium and then you can go into a specific field in college or when you're in fourth grade you decide to go to gymnasium and then what grade does gymnasium go through from fifth to twelfth grade tenth grade would be you can drop out of gymnasium at tenth grade and still get your realschule abschluss. So after the 12th grade, I'm assuming you just go to college then. Yeah, if out you of gymnasium. Yeah, well, that, that yeah, why would you get your gymnasium degree if you don't don't want to go to college? So you said you can when you go to realschule, you can choose to go to a special gymnasium where you then go to college. What do you do if you don't go to a special gymnasium for 11th and 12th grade? then you would have to do something with your Realschule degree. So probably something not more in the academic region, but something like like a more craftier thing. So like what I'm hearing is Realschule is a trade school then. So you go to learn a trade like welding or yeah. to be a mechanic. Yeah. So Realschule goes from 5th to 10th grade and then if you're not going to do spe special gymnasium, then you just end at 10th grade and you go into a specific trade. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, that's kind of neat because if you're going to do a special trade here, they offer that class at the high school. And that's just the linear approach. But it's kind of scary that fourth graders are choosing what their life's path is going to be, whether they're going to be doing a specific craft or whether they're going to go to college. And those are fourth graders. So that's, well, what do you think the reasoning behind that is? There is actually a whole discussion in Germany going about that topic because when you are when you finish fourth grade, you get a um, weiter oder an, an Empfehlung, which is a suggestion from your teachers based on your grades on your behavior on what school you should go and while you're what i believe not technically forced to go to that school that they suggest you it still um it goes into consideration for uh, schools and if more people want to go to gymnasium that they then they have places then you're not or you're less likely to um, be chosen to go to gymnasium if you don't have a, a gymnasium suggestion. So it kind of depend. It's not their entire decision really, um, because they can still later change. And probably the the more um, kind of advanced or more um, academic students they would probably go on to gymnasium and if you if you are in gymnasium you can still uh, do one of those trade um trades but the the kids who don't go on gymnasium or fail in gymnasium and have to go to realschule so if you're failing gymnasium then you switch over to realschule well most of the time because you can repeat classes or repeat years but they'll most likely send you to Realschule if you repeat more than once. Because I know in America, a lot of times, parents don't agree with the uh, curriculum or don't agree, or just don't want to send their kids to school, so they homeschool them. Is that a big thing in Germany? 
It is not even allowed. It's not even allowed? Not, not even private schools. There's a, actually a paragraph in the Grundgesetz. Which is? About schools. And it states that private schools are um, technically to be... To, to not be uh, disallowed, but they have to be under the control of the state and have to follow state curriculums. And then that's and not it's a not private a private school, school anymore, right? Um, because they also have to employ people that um, have passed the... There's actually a college degree that you get if you want to teach on a German school. So... It's not really a private school anymore. It's just a public school and private building. So then my thinking goes to how well-funded German schools would be because if the state controls absolutely everything, I mean, the state controls all of public schools in America because that's a state, right, not a uh, federal. or that That's a state-controlled thing, not a federally-controlled thing. So the states can fund their schools however they want, but... How does that work in Germany? Is it based on the state or is it uh, all of, or like the national German government controls schools? I know that stuff like curriculums and, for example, the the A-levels are done by the state. So there's a huge difference in, um, in the, the, the difficulty to acquire an A-level in different states. That's why sometimes um, certain states are are called out for giving out their their A levels like like freebies or something, while others, especially Baden Württemberg and um, Bayern, actually is I think one of the more harder ones. Yet yeah, the, the state does all curriculums in uh, school. There's a Kultusministerium which does everything school related. How well funded are schools then? Do they have a lot of money to, like, buy sports equipment? And do you guys even have sports in school? Well, our sports equipment, from what I've seen in America, isn't at all that great um, or as great as yours is. That's kind of just off school. Our school um, gym is very small. Yeah, other schools in Constance have bigger gyms, so... Well, then again, your school is older than America. Your school is like 400 years old. America is like 250 years old. Yeah, I think they actually want to build one new on our... We have a big, big field next to our school, and there's nothing really going on there. We maybe go there once a year or something to play football or soccer. I don't know how how well-funded our schools are. I just... Well, I think that your schools are actually coming back to sports, more kind of whole day entertainment equipped because your school, even it has a swimming pool, some tennis courts, baseball field, a baseball field. even. Yeah, I, that might be owned by the city, but it's right on the school's property. And the tennis courts also might be city owned, but the uh, the school uses them. And then we have a track and then we also have a uh a football field, and we just got sprinklers put into the marching band field. So that's a big thing with us is we have school-sponsored sports. We represent the school in our sports. Uh, So that's why we have a lot of nice facilities. Are there school-sponsored sports in Germany, or is everything private, like in a club? Yeah, everything's private. There's no school-sponsored stuff. Well, that kind of explains why you guys don't have like a swimming pool and a football field and all that other stuff, because if it's privately owned, then it can be kept up even nicer and the school doesn't have to use any money to keep that stuff up. So that might be the way to go is with private sports, because then the school can put their resources into other things. But at the same time, then not all the kids, not all of the kids in school who want to play sports can play sports because it's privately owned. Don't you have to pay athletic fees anyways? Compared to club sports, it's absolutely nothing. Club sports is, are very expensive. Well, didn't you have to do something like fundraising for... for? I do recall something about athletic fee fundraising. Or you had to go go around it. So, 
a lot of the school sponsored sports do fundraising because they only they can only get a certain amount of money for um from the school or from the state because schools are run by the state so they do fundraising so that they can do extra stuff so for example my marching band we do fundraising in order to be able to go on trips out of the state so that we can participate in competitions that are far away so we need to pay for the bus fees but we already used all of our state sponsored or school sponsored money on local competitions so we need to raise money to for the bus fee to get all the way to utah so that's why we do fundraising is for extra money for extra things well technically the um all the facilities are still or most of the facilities are still owned by the state um for example our tracks we have three tracks in constance one is the university track that's the one nearest to me then we have the um, one in the Bodensee Stadion, which is a big, um, actually, I think it's kind of a soccer fields, festival fields, track hybrid. So there's all sorts of stuff going on there. It's right on the lake, so it's kind of cool. And the next one is on the Schenzler, which is um, actually the, the gym where all the, uh, the, the handball people play in. And it's also right on the lake, so it's kind of cool. Okay, so you just said the track at the university is owned by the state. Does that mean that the state runs the university? So I do not. I don't know if the state, meaning Baden-Württemberg, is running the universities, but I do know that it's um, government controlled. Um, all the states and the university. So that's why college is free then? Well, how you... Hmm, if you look at it that way, it's it's free. You get it for free, but you have to pay taxes your whole life to finance. So if you go to college, you have to pay more taxes? No, if you go to college, you actually get money for... It's called BAFUG. Um, it depends on the income of your parents. So if your parents don't have that much income, you get more money to um, finance your clothes or um, your your um, apartment or whatever. And then everybody pays taxes, like higher taxes, in order to keep the universities open. Yeah. So, I mean, in my opinion, I think higher taxes, free college, I, I'd go with that rather than lower taxes, and really expensive college. Hmm. Well, that's something to discuss about, but I think that people who, who don't go to college, they shouldn't be, shouldn't be forced for, for public good to pay their, a, a fair share of their paycheck to um, finance something that they're not even See, not and even that's using. the same thing in America with the argument for public health care. People don't want public health care because if you don't have health care right now and you're not paying for insurance, then why would I pay extra taxes for health care? But the people that are paying for health care are, are like, well, yeah, I'd pay extra taxes for health care because in the long run, it would be beneficial to me because I would be getting more than I am now. I'd be getting uh, I'd be coming out better if I paid higher taxes and got free health care. But at the same time, then it's more widespread, which means the quality goes down. So when quantity of healthcare goes up because it's everywhere, because the government is everywhere, then quality of healthcare goes down because quantity, quality, uh, they're constantly hanging in the balance. And when one goes up, the other goes down. Yeah, that's something you can see in Germany. We have generalized healthcare or you, you can get private healthcare if you want to, but if you don't want to there's no way for you to just not pay for healthcare, and you can actually look that up and many people are complaining about it they're complaining about that um, private health care gets way more resources or a way better quality of health care than generalized health care which is you can look it up it's gesetzliche krankenkasse versus privat versichert link in the show notes that's a big thing here and 
I think, yeah, many people are bashing the private healthcare or saying that generalized healthcare should even be financed more. Yeah, that that's something to to go on another day. Well, if you want to talk about that now, we're only at 25 minutes, so that would probably bring the episode up to 30 minutes. Do you want to talk about healthcare? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about healthcare. Because actually many kinds of insurance, many insurance is actually covered by the state and, and they take taxes for it. So not only health insurance, but also is that not age insurance? Uh, life insurance. Life insurance. No, the, the, the insurance that ensures you get money when you retire. Retirement insurance? So in America, essentially the government-sponsored uh, like retirement insurance, as you're calling it, is Social Security. I mean, not everybody gets it, and it's super complicated. And then for medical stuff, when you're retired, it's Medicare. And from your organization, from the place you worked at, it's sometimes called your pension. So you get money from the place you worked at, and that's called a pension. Okay. Um, yeah, in Germany, you have to pay into a, a thing called Gesetzliche Rentenkasse, which is basically more or less like a Ponzi scheme, if you want. You pay in money from the younger generation to give it to the older generation. And the thing in Germany is that every family only has like an average one point point something children so on the long run it just doesn't work and that's the state sponsored that's the state sponsored one and you have to pay you have to pay into it there's no getting around it is there a private then no and you don't have like a pension through your through the place you worked at well if you work in a state controlled facility you get pension or what's the German word for it um Pension, actually, it is pension. And there are some other versions like Riester Rente and Rurop Rente, which is not mandatory, but it is an add on to the Gesetzliche Rentenkasse. And you, you can as well uh, invest into private stuff like private insurance or buy some, some land or some equities of some kind. But yeah, you have to pay into Ponzi scheme thing. And that's not a tax, that's a separate program? I don't think it's a tax. It, it was called Generations Vertrag. Do you know what Vertrag means? Nope. Uh, oh, Generation Agreement. That's the bad thing with it. If you once started it and you have people that are actually relying on getting this and they've paid their whole life to get what they think is their uh, money that they um, they are now owed by by the people of Germany, then you can't really stop it that easy. So um, that's a big problem. Yeah, it, it's like the self-driving car dilemma. Self-driving cars aren't going to be 100% safe until all of the cars are self-driving. And you just can't force people to make that transition. What What transition? To, I, I, I was just using an analogy between I, taking the program away when people are using it right now and self-driving cars. Because if you everybody has a self-driving car, then they can communicate with each other. But if there's one person that doesn't, then they cause a wreck and then everything goes to chaos. So, Well, the, the, the Rentenkasse would probably, in, in predictions, would go down anyways because as i said there are um, less and less and less people born in germany so less people have to pay for the health or the, the pension of more people and they're now trying to delay that by hiring the age that you have to work to to get that money and doing other stuff like giving you less money actually for the money you you've been putting in I'm actually looking at a study by some German institute that said that you would need about 3 billion more people 
to finance it in 2030. You, you could safely say that it's not going to be around one way or another. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the fifth episode of the Venn Diagram Podcast. Our YouTube is Venn Diagram Podcast. You can find us at anchor.fm slash Egan dash Benedict. We are the Venn Diagram Podcast. And our website is vendiagrampodcast.wixsite.com slash site. You can email us at vendiagrampodcast at gmail.com. And please do email us. That would be great. Email us with your ideas and we will seriously consider them. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next episode. Hello, everyone. This is Future Egan. Benedict and I are going to be doing something where if you subscribe on YouTube, we will say your name at the end of the podcast. So today, our thanks goes to Robert Navarrete. Robert, thanks for subscribing.